I'm Don. Welcome to Church of Making Your Day. Coming this way is my beautiful wife, Natasha. And we're getting into uh, Deuteronomy 28. And were we at 31? Starting 31? Well, verse 31, because the entire chapter was like kind of 67 six to, yeah. verses, so we split it by two. Yeah. We're going to start with 31. And... Uh, the quick introduction to this uh, ch uh, chapter, basically, or the continuation of this chapter, that um, at the beginning of the chapter we talk about blessings, right? Right. But uh, now we're getting back to that cursing stage. <laughs> but so what's happened that if you, should I say, press the buttons of God? Should I say that? Right. <laughs> right. That's yeah. one way. Hey, so he presses you, back. You, you, you really, you really, That's not pretty. you're really pushing in the wrong direction, right? Right. And. It's basically not like he is punishing you. You're punishing yourself, right? So when the challenge, like we call curses challenges, right? When it comes to you at first, you have a great chance to turn around 180 degrees. And guess what? And God will bless you. And God will turn around uh, towards you. And you're going to propel towards him. That's what we call blessings, right? When you realize your challenges, when you realize the, the curses, the common, you don't want them to escalate, right? Remember when you're saying, uh, when it's rain, it pours, right. right? Why is that? Because the negative, this energy that you have, going to attract no more than other more negative energy. And it's going to be like a snowball, and you don't know what hits you. Because according to what our Lord said in uh, chapter 28, if you bless, you bless in all directions, right. in all ways. Right. And if you curse, guess <laughs> you what? You're cursed in all directions. And you curse in all way. What we're talking about, well, we're talking about health, we're talking about business, we're talking about your work, we're talking about your family, we talk about your children. Right. So you don't know way, which way to turn because everything is falling apart, right? Why? Because when challenge comes to you, when that curse, as we call challenge, comes to you, you did not pay attention, you kind of brushed it off. Right. And you're like, well, I can handle that. You know, that little thing, I can right. handle this. It's not. But then there's a bigger challenge come, and you're like, well, I can handle this. Right. So, according to what Lord told us in the previous chapter, in the chapter, like up to this verse, um, it's going to escalate, right? right? So your blessings will pour to you. You will escalate blessings as much as, as the same way as you're going to escalate your cursing. But this end of this chapter is just so sad because the escalation of this curse is literally leading you to complete destruction, right? Destruction of your soul destruction of your of your health destruction of your relationship destruction of everything you possibly ever dream about why because you ignored those challenges when they came to you one by one when you were able to handle them so in this case we talk about nations we don't even talk about one person anymore right, right. we don't talk about small group of people or certain tribes or etc we're talking about nations what happened and as you will see at the end of the chapter we actually echo in with a revelation because we're talking about the end of the days right and that's exactly how it's going to be end if you if you don't believe look around what's going on right now and how we ignoring 10 commandments of god every single commandment that is written going through fight right between people among people and nobody understands why why we're fighting about it when it's so obvious it's so good and it's written for you but we do so uh, let's start with verse 31 and see where it leads us but uh, it leads us not in good direction if we decided to disobey lord and ignore his instructions right and before that we open a prayer yes. oh yeah that. Father in heaven, we come before you again so thankful, Lord God, that we can read your word and that we can get out to our audience, Lord God. We're still free in our free country to preach your word, your word that changes lives, your word that takes us out of darkness and brings us into your miraculous Shekinah glory, your peace, 
your word that opens our eyes, opens the eyes of the blind and the ears of the deaf, spiritually, of course, we're talking, Lord God. So we ask you right now to bless your word and bless our audience. Again, Lord God, if any are sick among us, get the anointing oil. What does Jesus Christ's last name mean? Christ, anointed one. We're not talking about pounding on somebody's head, slaying them in the spirit, blowing on them. Let's do it your way. James 5, if anyone's sick, call the elders and let them anoint that person with the uh, oil of our people, right? The olive oil. We thank you too, Lord God, that you've, you're just so great. You're just so awesome. And we want to be more and more like you every day. Again, we want to be less like ourselves, our self life. And we want to be more like you. So open us up to your Holy Spirit, Lord God, and open this word to our minds right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So 31. Deuteronomy 28, verse 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and you're not liking it. So we continue this kind of escalation of this curse. Of the cursings, just, right. This isn't your idea. Just to remind this is your enemy's idea. And thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face and shall not be restored to thee. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Sounds like Job. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. You're just going to be, um, what's the word? Devastated, right? No strength, no strength to move, no strength to do anything. Just so far down, not coming back. Tomorrow, worse. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. Thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. It's going to drive you insane. You won't believe it. You had the blessings. God gave you the blessings. And now... You're watching everything fall apart. Your whole life. Why? Those other gods, those other idols, you took your eye off the ball. You took your eye off the Word of God. You took the eye off your Master and your Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't do it. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch that cannot be healed. From the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. There's Job again with all those boils. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. You like other gods? You're going to get them. You asked for it, you got it. And man, are you going to be miserable if you keep a little bit of your sanity, that is. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among the nations. Nothing good. Whither the Lord shall lead thee, thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shall gather but little in away. Instead of, instead of like bumper crop after bumper crop, like the United States of America, like Israel, when they were right with God, you're going to take a ton of seed out and bring in almost nothing. 
because you're cursed. And when you're cursed, the land is cursed. Your animals are cursed. Your family's cursed. Everyone's cursed. And shall gather but little in, for the locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shalt neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coasts, but thou shalt not anoint thyself. There's the anointing of our people. Don't think it's gone. James 5, anointing Jesus Christ. What does Christ mean? The anointed one. Remember? Most Christians on earth, you tell them this, they have no clue of what you're talking about. Why? They don't know the simple word of God. <clears throat> Thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive oil shall for thine olive shall cast its fruit. It'll be worthless. It'll drop too soon before it ripens. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them. For they shall go into captivity, into slavery. Your sons and daughters, you're going to watch them go off to another heathen nation and be slaves. But in nowadays, when we're talking about, so what does that mean? Well, because... Um, since, since our children, our sons and daughters, they're not grown up with the Word of God. So right. basically, you don't see them. They're gone in Never Never Land. Why? Because they're gone for their gods, whatever those gods are. Right. Whatever those ambitions that they have. But there's no decency in them, right? In to stay in connection with you. It's just because they did not grow up with the Word of God. And that's basically what's really happened. So you would not see them. They're just literally gone yep. to pursue what is important to them. Right. And I can attest to that. I had my kids in a born-again church and different churches. They had everything but the Word of God, right? And my kids hated those churches with a passion, just like I hated my church when I grew up with a passion. Why? What are they doing? What are they telling you, right? Lies, deception. And my kids are in a bad way, right? I pray for them all the time. But this, you're going to watch them go off. They don't even go off to religion. They could care less about God, right? And they're paying the price. So all I can pray is, you know, Lord, snap them out of it, right? What else can you do? Okay, uh, 43? 42. 42? All thy trees and fruit of thy land shall the locust consume. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. So he's... Um he is the new, basically, he is how we echo in with the revelation and we see the stranger. Remember, Lord said, you should not put stranger in power, right? right. To, to, to basically be ahead of, of your society. Of one nation under God. But you did, in this case. And he said, as you're going to put that stranger, that was going to happen. Right, and you will see we're going to read right now and realize what is going to happen. And, and you have to understand that we're talking about um, somebody in power that does not have word of God and instruction of God in place in his actions. So we need to, uh, we need to look at the leaders of the countries when they lead the country. And they could be Christian, all kind of denominations, wherever they're from, right? But these people, they so deceived themselves and they deceiving other that surround them. Right. Because they don't have the word of God. Right. So all the instruction that God gave to possible these people, the leaders, they they it's it's not their ears to hear, it's not their eyes to see. So how they can lead the country towards the God instruction if they do not know any. Right. They do not know. 
Right. And this is why this is the stranger in faith. Remember Jesus in Revelation 2 said, there's a seven churches, but there's only two of them that worthwhile to consider in the, kin in the kingdom of God. And five of them completely deceived, right? So when somebody stranger rule in your country, a leader of your country, so is that person is in a true uh, faith with God and the true instruction of God, well, look at the laws that the person brings to the country. It's very simple to know where this person stands, right? right. Look at the laws, look at the regulations, look at the condition of the country, look of the condition of the pe uh, people, look at the condition of their spirits, look at the condition of their attitudes, their action. And that's basically exactly what I'm going to tell you, if this ruler is a stranger or not. Right. Stranger to God, this person is. Stranger to God. So let's see what happened when he is in power in verse 44. Right. Woke and abortion in the White House? I think we better think again, huh? Shall lend to thee. And thou shalt not lend to him what you don't have anything to lend anymore. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. After World War II, we lent to the world. We fed the world. What were we borrowing? Borrowing? We don't have to borrow. We're by far the most blessed, greatest country on earth, one nation under God. What happened? Something so evil, so satanic. It's unbelievable. And now let's see, 34, maybe it's up around 34.5 trillion. You have any idea? You know, they'll have a stack. They'll have a man standing next to a stack of like $1 bills and it's a million dollars, right? Boy, that's, you know, that's a pretty uh, big stack there, a million dollars. Then they'll have a, the man, you can't even hardly see him, right? Next to a billion. Here's a million. Here's a billion, right? Then they'll have a man, you can't even see, he looks like an ant, standing next to a trillion, one trillion dollars. We got 34 trillion and growing and we're doing nothing about it. We can hardly pay the, the interest and I'm sure it's an interest only loan, isn't it? Boy, did we ever step in it big time. The important part, uh, part that it's important to realize now that it's not that late to turn to the sources that God pro actually provides us in this earth that we do have oil that that we don't have to borrow from other nations. Right. And if we're going to stop borrowing the oil and if we're going to have our own oil and start even selling our oil, Right, so we will able to pay all of that, and we're going to stop borrowing from other nations because Lord said not to borrow. That's His instructions, which we failed to to follow. And look what's happening with the countries now. Look what happened with Europe. What ha what happened with our country? Right. Everything is falling apart. Why? Because we're not following instruction of God. He said not to borrow. Right. Because the green people, the green people are saving everything. Windmills. What happens? When the wind doesn't blow, you ain't got no power, man. What if the wind stops for a week or two or three? Here it blows, one, most of the time it doesn't blow here. Well, what are you gonna do with your windmill? Th there's no capability, basically. Even even the solar panels, as, as you know, as we know, yes, there's a better to have solar panels in not if you can. Right. Like if people live in mountains, then they, they can have solar panels. But if you live in a city, where are you going to put your solar panels? Right. Right. If you're going to put yeah. on a small roof of the building, it's not going to be enough even to sustain the building itself. Right. Right. So I would imagine a place like Washington, uh, Washington, that rains 10, 12, you know, months out of the year. I wonder how solar, I wonder if there's such thing as solar. Yeah, there's another point. Be so ridiculous. Let's, let's, let's say states like California and Arizona, uh, right. where there's a lot of sun, it makes sense, but there's a lot of states that have rains and cloud all the time. Right. So the solar Good luck. would not even work there. Now, there's a few states, uh, maybe like Las Vegas has some strong winds, but it's Las Vegas and is sun. One, one state, right? Yeah. Uh, one city. However, 
if Lord provided to us with oil and it's under our feet, why don't we use what God provides us? Why are we yeah. not leaning on our God? Remember, we talked about we talked about standards. just uh, um, uh, Santa Barbara alone. It's leaking up from the ground. Oh, that's polluting. Okay, God's polluting. You got something against it? His, it's his country, and he heals it. He fixes it, right? Why is there salt water in the ocean? To fix stuff like that. You know, it's like the Valdez. I remember this tanker that, you know, um, all the, and there was a break underneath, like five miles down on these, you know, super low where they're drilling oil, right? And I mean, all this oil is pouring out. That's terrible. We're not asking for that. But maybe God is asking. I actually want to show in us that. Yeah, hello. Oil, you're so blessed. You have it's so, coming up. so much oil that you right. have to use it. Why don't, you, why don't you drill a few billions, trillions of gallons and give it a break? And then it won't leak because exactly. you're taking it because God's given it to you. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. Our great, 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 great grandchildren will really praise us because we didn't destroy the world in global warming bs right god said in genesis there will be summer and it'll be hot and there will be winter and it'll be cold and in a lot of places that global warming crap you know what they do they go like this oh global warming they had a, a global warming meeting in one of these countries up in like uh, summertime or something, around summertime, springtime, in Scandinavia or whatever, they got completely obliterated with a snowstorm, right? Guess what they start saying? Guess what the idiot hypocrites start saying? What is that? It's climate change. It's climate change. I thought it was global warming, idiots. Why are you freezing? The snow's over your head. Okay, you get the point, right? Right. I'll get off my high horse. Right. So, so the point is, when God blesses you, not you're not questioning. That's for sure. Right. You know, and when God tells you not to do, like not to borrow from our nations, you're not borrowing from our Don't nations. Don't do it. You have to have obedience, and you have to follow instruction of God. And if it's still not clear to so many people, well, there's not so much can be done. Yeah. Well, you know so, what? You, hopefully, you live and learn a little bit. A lot of people don't. So let's continue. And 45. 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hast hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. I wonder how many times he said that up till now, you know, in the whole book here. A hundred and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So let's just stop here for a second because, um, you know, we, we, we're pouring all this negativity in this day, all, all, all this because it's happening, right? It, it goes like a snowball. However, this particular verse out of all the verses is so important to understand that, let's read it again, because thou sermoned not the Lord thy God was joyfulness, Right? right, joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Right. So, what does it remind you? It reminds you very much to remember that everything comes from God. All these blessings that He's poured at you. Right. That you have to be thankful and you have to be grateful and you have to realize that's from Him and you have to keep His in mind and have this gladness of heart and joyfulness and in attitude when you have this abundance. So in other way, when you have abundance and you're walking around with a sad face, right? With a long face, should we say, right? And you not appreciate what God gave you, why he would continue to give it to you, right? right. So it's almost like you're giving, you're giving, you're giving some people to some people, right? 
And then it gets to the point you just like you don't see any kind of back and forth relationship whatsoever. Right. Say adios, amigo. And then you just say, so why in the world are you even doing this, right? Right. Wasting and, your time, and, wasting your money. And and then you basically saying to yourself, well, maybe I should just take this time and give it to people that will appreciate or spend time with somebody that will notice that. That's exactly how God look at it, right? He look at us this exact way. That if He pours at you all this abundance, and you're not taking this with joyful heart, and not thankful God, and not having Him in His life, and not walking His walks, so why He would do that for you? This kind of interesting verse is kind of sneaked in into all this uh, destruction that we're going right now, but it's a good reminder. Right. Good reminder. So when you have, you have to cherish, right? Right. You have to remember that this is blessings, and you want to continue this blessing going. And this right. is the this is a receipt. This is the recept, right? This is exactly um, what kind of action you you should have when you serve in your God, right? With right. joyfulness, with gladness in your heart for the abundance what he gave you. And forty-eight. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Back to curses. Right. Back to curses. You're going to be the slave which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. Sounds like uh, the way the United States is starting to get, huh? But it's kind of interesting. Um, if you're going to look through the entire chapter when the curses are mentioned, uh, and if you remember we said last previous chapter that curses are challenges. So who is sending this? Like, like look at saying, Lord, 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 Lord. Right. The Lord is sending you these challenges for you, for you to wake up. Right. right? For you to wake up. And you are the one who brought these challenges on you. Like he has no choice. Your negativity is so uh, going out of proportion that he has to send you even stronger challenges for you to finally start waking up and do something about it. Right. And that's how you escalate in, in this negativity. And that's basically exactly what he does. Yep. 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as an eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. And he shall besiege thee in all thy gates, until thy high and fenced walls come down. Where would thou trusteth? throughout all thy land, and he shall besiege thee and all thy gates throughout all the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Total annihilation. Just like David and the, you know, the kings of Israel totally annihilated the Philistines or the Jebusite, whatever, right? All those groups. Now you're going to be those people being destroyed by them. What comes around goes around if you don't serve God. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own. Now this gets a little hairy, crazy, but thou shalt eat the fruit, thy children, of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God hath given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. Now this has happened before. It's been mentioned in the Bible. There was a king. They were under siege in Jerusalem. And the king's walking on the wall and there's two prostitutes down there. And they said, "Uh, Sire, Sire, you know, we we have a matter for you to judge. What is it? 
well, um, we don't have anything to eat, so and nobody had anything to eat. So uh, this lady, I have a child. One pro both prostitutes had a child. Um, they they made an agreement. Today we'll eat my child, cook up my child, and eat him, and tomorrow we'll cook up your child. But when I came to her, she wouldn't share her child. <laughs> what do we do? What did the king do? Grabbed his robe and rant. What else are you going to do? That's the situation that we're judging on. It's pretty scary, right? But what we also have to do in Mark 13, we have to look at do a mother will, will turn in daughter to the Antichrist. Father will turn in son-in-law to the Antichrist. Hey, they're really great people. You know, thinking that the Antichrist, the devil himself incarnate, the devil himself incarnate is Jesus Christ, because that's how he's coming. And all these people, these uh, rapture idiots, are just going to flock by the millions. They're going to flock to Satan. Why? That's his message. 666 comes before 777. Everybody, praise the Lord, Jesus is coming. Hey, praise the Lord, Satan's coming. Don't forget, don't be deceived. Well, two will be in the field, and one will be plowing, and one will be taken. And two will be in the bed. One will be taken and one will be left. You know what these preachers say? I want to be the first one taken. Taken by the Antichrist. A child can count to seven. Six, six, six comes before seven, seven, seven. Antichrist comes here to earth before Jesus Christ. Don't ever forget that. Because they don't know. They don't have a clue. Okay. Where are we? 50 what? 52? Oh, no, I'm sorry, uh, 54. 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he had nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness within, where within thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. When it again, when it rains, what? It pours, baby. There's no coming back from this. So, so to understanding this, um, as these curses keep rolling on the nation at first, and then on the nations, and second, on the entire world, basically. Right. So we have this Antichrist, which is, this is exactly his description, right? Right. So he is a very, very delicate. His eyes shall be, but his eyes shall be evil towards right. his brother. And what he's going to do, literally, he's going to consume the souls, right? Well, it's not about the, the flesh body here. It's consumption of the souls, and he's going to be basically take more and more and more on, the, on his side. And right. That's exactly basically what's happening. And, and there's a verse in the New Testament, I can't remember what it was, but don't fear the one that can kill the body only. You know all those first century Christians, right? They were butchered uh, day in, day out, right? Strapped with uh, sheepskins, bloody sheepskins, and thrown out the families. You know, mom and dad and the kids are out in the arena with the bears and the lions in bloody skins. And they would bet on how long it took to, to, uh, to slaughter for these animals, to slaughter all of them, right? Now that's terrible, right? But it's not as bad as the one who can kill the soul, right? For eternity, right? Those people, those Christians got their lives taken. And that's sad. That's terrible, like Jesus Christ. But guess what? What kind of reward are they going to get in heaven? They made it way through the first resurrection. They don't have to worry about the second resurrection before those who don't make it get thrown into the pit of hell forever. This physical body, hey, I'm 67 years old. Let me tell you, it's getting old, right? It's getting feeble. It's, it's got problems, okay? When I was 16, 70, racing motocross, there were no problems. 
Everything was awesome. I crashed, but I healed. And now it's hard to get up out of bed and get to the bathroom and get back, right? This body's going to die. Don't let your soul die. Don't let your, your eternal, you know, able. See, soul means able to die. Okay, let your soul live through the spirit of Jesus Christ. That's what matters. Eternity is what matters. Not this right now. Well, I mean, it matters to, and take care of yourself, of course, right? But we're going out every, every day. You get a day older, and that's that. I'm 56. 50 what? 56. Okay. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil toward the husband of her bosom. Everybody is going to hate everybody. And toward her son and toward her daughter and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and toward their children, which she shall bear, for she shall eat them for want of all. What's worse, eating them? or aborting them by the millions. Ah, it's kind of a toss-up, isn't it? I don't know. At least when you eat them, you got something to eat. When you just abort them and throw them in the trash can, well, what a waste. Okay, let me see what... Um, I'm in the middle of a sentence. 57. I know. Uh, and toward her young ones cometh out from between her feet, and toward her children, which she shall bear... For she shall eat them for want of all things, all things secretly in the siege and straightness, wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. And as you can see, we have change of souls um, towards Antichrist as a man and as a woman, right? So change of soul completely... Um, discarding of your family, of your children, of anything surround you, or your husband, or whatever that is, and the values that Lord built for us, for all His um, laws and commandments, uh, completely ignored. And He went to the point of complete destruction of a man's soul and a uh, woman's soul, uh, turning their face to Antichrist only. Right. right away from, from the family in 58. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord, big capital letters, the Lord, thy God, then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. What does wonderful mean? terrifying, great, great, and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues. You're going to plant your food for the locusts and the evil armies against you. That's who you're feeding. And of the long continuance and sore sicknesses and of long countenance, Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. And ye shall be left few in number, Whereas ye were as the star. What was the promise to Abraham from God? Your seed will be as the stars of heaven. You can't even begin to count them. Like the sand in the ocean. How do you count that? That's how Abraham's seed would be blessed. Because thou wouldst not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. In the same way, from the blessings to the cursings, they're real. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice 
over your destruction and annihilation. Why? You ask for it. Doesn't sound very nice. It's not. Well, let's uh, just stop here and think about uh, for a moment. Why Lord would be rejoicing in you uh, and your soul is completely being destroyed? Well, because at that point, maybe we should call this point of no return to right. God anymore. Right. right? On so, earth. No, altogether. Okay. Because uh, the point is that God sending you challenges and challenges and challenges to the point, right, that you completely destroy your soul when things get so bad as right. you saw previously. Nothing to do. now... It's so clear to the Lord that He doesn't want to have you in His kingdom for eternity. Why He would like to have you? Right. What, why what good would, are you? Why He would even fight for you anymore? Because He did. And you pay no attention to Him. Right. So at this point, He rejoice that you're going away right. from His kingdom. The evil is gone. He's completely realizing that Good news. you should not be a part of His kingdom. So in other way, you confirm to Him with a hundred and a hundred and ten percent that you don't want to be part of His kingdom. Period. Right. And now He just is re rejoicing to go through the cleansing process. So right now, what you see um, that going right now in the world and you question a lot of things. This is a cleansing process. The evil should not sustain. The, the evil should be gone right. eventually. It's not going to be in a second and a third verse age with God in his kingdom. It, it cannot. This it, evil that right. we experience right now in the countries, these things that are done to people and their families. Is that what you want to have in the Theodore's age? These people make decisions. They're not going to change. Right. They said to God, we're not going to change, period. Right. And Lord They're now doing what? He is rejoicing to basically let them go and with his blessing, just please go. Right. Just please. Out. Gone. Out. And that's basically exactly what it is. So in other way, all these opportunities where they could save their soul and they could return to God, they ignore to the certain point there's no longer this Lord wants them. He doesn't want them anymore. Right. right? Can you blame him? Yeah. No. And 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all the people from the one end of the earth even unto the other and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone, idols. So what's, what's really happened? Well, what's happened as will happen, right? So now we know that, that people basically flee on different countries just to save their, their bodies, their physical bodies. Right. Right. They don't care about the soul. They don't care if, if they're going to live uh, in countries that don't have any Christianity. Right. They don't care if they're going to live in a country that hate God, a country that hates God. Right. And has no gods at all. Right. Being completely atheist. They're they just looking care. for survival. They don't care. Right. I mean, they never cared in the first plan. But now they like, like, um, like these people with no, no face just running just to save the soul just like anywhere right? right without possibility even thinking about their children and their future what future what children right they're just trying to sell save somehow their physical body and they really even don't care where they are right now as soon as they somehow can pull it through right so that's the state and we can apply soul. all this very spiritually can't we I mean, how many people are, are there out there that, again, just don't care? I go to church on Sunday, Sunday mornings. I hate it, but I do it. Praise the Lord. I'm a Christian. Really? <laughs> I, I think you better rethink that one. Mm -hmm. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord shall give thee 
there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. You don't even want to be alive after a while. And thou shalt fear day and night and shall have none assurance of thy life. So in other ways, so you don't have God. What do you got? So in, other, in other way, you thought that if you're going to run somewhere from your challenges, if you're going to go away from the challenges that God sent you for you to handle, that you will find peace in some other nations. Right. Right. Far away from God. Good luck. Right. Name one. And apparently, <laughs> I can't. You did not find any peace in your heart. Right. That's exactly what he said. He said you're gonna have fear day and night and no assurance of life. And you will have Scary. doubt, right? So you, you, you completely finished, right? You, your soul You're cannot spent. Find, find peace and cannot find any satisfaction. doesn't matter where you go. Because some people think, oh, it's like, you know, you know what? Time to leave America. Time to go to somewhere else. Well, guess what? That somewhere else is going to find you. Ch your challenge is going to follow you. It does not matter right. where you're going. If you think you can run, well, you can run, but you not, cannot hide from God and right. His laws, right? So you may run to opposite side of the world, but if those challenges that you meant to go through to get where you're supposed to be in the third or sage, you will have to go through these challenges, and there's no way you can avoid this, right? Right. And that's what happens. And 67. In the morning thou shalt say, Would God it were even... You wake up and you're going to go, oh God, I can't wait till, till tonight where I can go back to sleep and try to sleep this misery off. And at evening thou shalt say, would God it were morning because you're hating it all. You're hating morning. You're hating getting up in the morning, hating facing the day, hating going to sleep. Probably can't sleep. Would God it were morning for the fear of thine heart wherewith thou shalt fear and for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt or into what the land of sin like the uh, the Israelites always wanted to return to always looking back trying to return back to Egypt again with ships by the way thereof I spake unto thee thou shall see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man, you know, this is when you know, this is when you know it's getting really bad. By this time, right? No one's going to have you. No one's going to spend money on you. You can probably barely, you know, Pick yourself up off the ground. They're going to buy you as a slave to go out in the field and work all day. You won't be able to. You won't have any strength. You'll be spent. You'll be worthless. So the moral of the story is what? God and his commandments. Follow God and his commandments and be blessed. Now, of course, good things happen to bad people. Bad things happen to the, uh, good people. But for the most part, for your life, God is there. And he wants to bless you because he loves you. Let him. I mean, this isn't rocket science. A five-year-old child can understand anything we're saying. You know, these aren't like weird, mysterious words, weird, mysterious religion. This is about as basic, you know, as basic gets. Just do. Do it. Not just hear it. Do it. Okay. And it says... You'll be blessed. Test him. Yeah, just to hear your comments saying that good things happen to bad people and uh, bad things happen to the good people. The things happen. Yeah, they stuff's happen, happen no matter what. No matter what. You're good, bad, you're ugly, it does not yeah. matter. The challenge will come to you. Why? Because that's the whole purpose why we're here on a second earth age. We're here to learn about our challenges, our challenges of our soul, our negative traits of our soul through the experiences that God throwing us 
and then we recognize and that we're not so wonderful as we thought we are. Because when you live in a protection like a shell environment, that you're a wonderful person. But deep down, you're not so wonderful. Why? Yeah. Because as soon as a situation coming up, suddenly all this ugliness coming out of you that you even didn't know it exist. The people right. surround you didn't know it exist. And then you're just like, my goodness, what just happened? Well, this is exactly what happened. But following the God instruction, it will continue to happen to you until you realize that you need to get rid of that trait that come out out of your soul. Right. And you have to understand that only with kindness, instructions of, of God, you have to overcome these challenges and you get to the better condition and then those challenges will stop pouring at you. But don't get to the position of destruction because this is what Lord said. At some point, he'll look at you no and return. he said, you know what? I don't think I want that. I yeah. mean, I'm done. I'm, I'm just done with this particular soul. I tried, I sent challenges. This person just ignores me, ignores my laws, ignores my instructions. I don't need this person with me in eternity. And that's his choice, right? Because he's building this for himself. And he wants to have the best of the best. And he has full right to do it. Amen, sister. And we thank you so much for being with, uh, uh, with us in such a not easy chapter. We just... Uh, <laughs> not fun. Not Real, fun. Not fun. but not fun. Not fun to read about this reality, but... If you turn on TV, we don't have to remind you. God doesn't have to remind you because you see everything that comes to play when you are away from God. And we just can hope that your hearts are full of praise to the Lord and in your families, in your community, wherever you are, you're going through these challenges and you're going on the way that God asks you to go because you're worth it. You're worth it to be with Him and the Sodor's age. And this second verse age, you're not wasted. You, you did it right and you took every challenge by the horns, right? And you turn around and you succeed and you become overcometh, like Christ said. Be overcometh like I was and like I am. Amen. Amen. That's it. I think. Hey, baby, let's. you might have to tell them how to push the button. Um, we're going into what? A lot of different, um, a lot of different countries right now, and so um, what we set up, you know, for two years we haven't asked for anything. We're not beggars, okay? We don't want, you know, um, you know, for you to think we're begging for money. But you can give if you want to give. The Lord love. You'll never see a telethon here. You'll never see a basket being passed. But you can give where you're fed and we're feeding you the gospel if you like it give a little something not a big tithe not a big big amount but just give give god loves a cheerful giver all right i'm going to leave it at that short and sweet all right so thanks next time